Well, tonight we're going to talk about greatness. Now, did y'all know what the word greatness means? Or when some, somebody says some, something is great, you know, like you might say apple pie. Oh, it's great. I just love that. Or, or, or sometimes, you know, the, the word great might be used as great grandma. Some of y'all might be used as great grandma. So, you know, great, you know, that, it, it really has a special meaning to it. But tonight we're going to talk about greatness. Now, the Bible is quoting, uh, it has James quoted to say in chapter 2, verse 19, that thou believest that there is one God, thou doest wait. The devils also believe and tremble. Now, the New Living Translation, they translate that, as, that verse into, you say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. You know, good for you. You, know, you believe in that one God. Yeah. And the, the devils, they also believe, and they tremble because of. Now, now the devils now, now, and these demons, they know God personally. They don't live by faith. They know God and know His greatness. And, and the, the devils, they know all about God's greatness because they have witnessed God's greatness firsthand. So, you know, they, they don't live, you know, by, by, uh, by faith. And, and the scriptures say, you know, that because of God's greatness, that these devils, they tremble in fear. You know, because they know, they, you know, hear the word of God like they've heard Jesus speak it before. You know, they would tremble, or, or, or some of these men like Paul have spoken the word of God, and these devils know, you know, they can command, you know, in the name of Jesus, you know, to come out of these people. So, you know, the word of God is really, really powerful, so that has a lot of greatness in it. You remember when, uh, you remember when they, uh, they had come, they went across in the uh, lake, in the, in the boat, and Jesus got out, and uh, this man, he had been living among the tombs, he had, wasn't able to go back home, and he was he had demons in him, and uh, the demons they knew who Jesus Christ right. was as he before he even got out of the boat. They yeah. knew who he was, and they trembled, and they didn't want to have any part uh, of Jesus, and because they knew that Jesus, they felt like Jesus was going to just throw them out to nowhere. But do you remember where he sent the demons? That day, they were going to swine. They were going to swine, and so uh, the swine was full of demons, and they ran down the hill and, and drowned. And the, the people in the city, the people in the town nearby, they didn't want to have any part to do with Jesus because they knew that His work was wondrous. And, yeah. and as He's getting out of the boat, He's taking this man. This man, after he the demons come out of this man, He's sitting up and He's in His right mind, and He's eating. He's now got some clothing on. And, and uh, so the demons, they, they, they knew who he was. That's right. Yeah, they know exactly they who he is. They knew who he was, and they addressed him. Yeah. And it, even, even today, you know, the people out in the world, you know, they, they hear the Word of God, or, or, you know, the name of Jesus is spoken, you know, they just kind of shrug their shoulders and just, you know, go on. But like I said, even the, the demons in the darkest part of the spirit world, even demons and devils, they, they, they know God, they know of His greatness, that the, the Word of God makes them tremble, just the presence of God. You know, they, they recognize Him too, boy. Like, like she was saying, you know, the demons say, oh, Jesus, what have I done to you? You know, they recognize Him. You know, it's sad that people today, that they, they, they still don't, you know, just, just don't know the Lord. So we're going to talk about the greatness, and we're going to start out by sort of talking about the definition of greatness. Y'all kind of know what the word greatness means. One of the definitions is large in size. And we'll look over here. We'll get her to pull up uh, David and Goliath. You can blow that up. You can click on it and blow it up. Now, if you all notice now, uh, Goliath was about, he was about 9 foot 6 inches tall. And he was a whole lot bigger than David. So as far as greatness, you would say, well, this big, great big giant surely could defeat this little man because of just the word greatness meaning large in size. But we know that David was anointed with God's greatness and the little tiny David defeated that big old giant. Stood before me and, you know, defeated him. Oh, I love, love talking about the words of the Lord. Just, just get excited talking about it. Just, just David had that anointing on him. And, you know, he was like, you know, even though Goliath had that greatness, he was just big in size. You know, and he thought, well, he didn't have any problems. He'd come this little bitty fellow and would just slay him and walk all over him. But, you know, he, David had that anointing. And that's really something just, you know, to shout about. And so David, you know, took him down and he came killed him. And, and, and another, another definition for greatness is large and numb. 
like a, like a large army. Now, now we know in the scriptures that uh, Joshua's army marched around the walls of Jericho for six days. On the seventh day, the walls of Jericho you know, fell flat. So Joshua's uh, army went in and conquered the city, even though the Canaanite army was much bigger than them. So they were much you know, larger in number with their greatness. But Joshua's army had that anointing on you know, from God, and they were able to go in there and you know, march around that city just like God told them. And on that seven days, the walls just fell flat. And they went in there and they conquered all that. And, you know, whew, just praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your goodness. Think about that. That big, great wall that they had marched around and around. And it, it didn't only just fall. It fell flat. It fell to where they could, they could enter the city. They didn't, have to, they didn't say anything about they had to climb over the walls. Uh -huh. What was left of the walls, they were able to just go in just and take walk, that city. Just walk right in. Just do that faith in God and following God's instructions and all. Because He'll put that anointing and greatness on you. You know, anybody, anytime. All you got to do is just ask for that anointing, anointing and greatness from God. And He'll give it to you free. Now, in, uh, in, in the next picture now, the, the last definition of greatness it says beyond beyond the average, mighty, superior in character, quality, and skill. So, so we know that God is beyond average. He's not just the average. He is beyond the average. So that's part of that greatness. We also know that God is mighty and, and superior in character. So there's that greatness again, that definition of greatness again. And of course, we all know that God's work is perfect in quality. Now, if you you know, let the Lord lead you. He'll never lead you wrong and everything the Lord, you know, sets up and leads you. It's going to always be perfect. Nothing that man can do to tear it down, even though somebody might try. And it's, just, it's just perfect in quality. And, and also, uh, God's skills, another uh, definition of greatness is and, uh, skills are, you know, beyond understanding. That greatness is so when there's skills are beyond understanding. We know that God's skills are you know, way beyond our understanding. Things we just just don't understand and can't can't even imagine how things. Well, I mean, if you think about it, even as we think about it tonight, it's his greatness is beyond our understanding. Even his even just come here and down across so we can have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, that's hard to really understand why. Somebody would love you so much mm -hmm. that they would give their only begotten son that's that, right. to die for us. That's right. that, to me, that's greatness. That's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. That's something that, that's hard to understand. A love like that, that's you know, just so great. Just a great love. And a great love like that, so we know that, that if we've accepted Christ, that we don't go to the grave, you know, we go straight on into heaven. Or some say it's a paradise, because you know Jesus was telling it, the, the uh, criminal, the thief on the cross with him, says, you know, he said, you know, remember me today, Lord, in your kingdom. And he says, you know, today you will be with me in paradise. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, believe that, you know, we just kind of bypass the grave. We don't even go to the grave anymore because of God's, you know, great love and through His Son Jesus Christ. And that's just. That's just enough to shout about and just, I don't know, make your heart just fill with joy. So tonight we're going uh, to take a look at God's greatness uh, working through Stephen. Now, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, we use this word destined for greatness. Now, you might have like a, like a father who gives his son a basketball and the kid goes up to him, he's pretty good with the basketball and the father will say, my son is destined for greatness with that basketball. He's got some skills and he's out here dribbling around. <coughs> he's destined, you know, for that greatness. And, um, or, or a mother, you know, a mother might, you know, be helping a child, you know, her little girl out with math and that little girl might be good in math and she might say, you know, my daughter is destined for greatness in the math field because she's got that you know, got, got say, like the same talents as me, and I've passed that along, and it looks easy for her, and they say, you know, she's destined for greatness, might be an accountant when she grows up or something. But now, we're going to talk about Stephen and, and God's greatness, because when, when, you know, when, when you allow the Lord to work through you, there's always going to be that greatness. Anything that the Lord does within you or through you is just greatness. It's that perfect quality. And we're going to talk about Stephen. Now, do y'all remember uh, Stephen in the Bible? Does anybody you know, remember the name of Stephen in the New Testament? About the day of Pentecost? 
you remember? Okay, um, the Bible, um, in the Bible, Stephen was one of the first. Uh, he was one of the first seven Christian deacons, and he was generally regarded as, you know, as the first Christian martyr, you know, because he was stoned. Uh, Acts 6, chapter 6, verse 1 through 5 says that Stephen was a Jew who lived outside of Israel. He accepted Christianity and became one of the seven deacons chosen by the disciples to take care of the widows and the needies in Jerusalem. Remembering that the disciples had felt led to preach and teach the Word of God. So Stephen and the other seven were assigned to take care of the widows and the needies. And, um, you know, so that was all that, that Stephen was chosen to do by man. He was just, if y'all remember that in your Bible, I might have read through that a uh, little bit too fast, but there was a lot of uh, grumbling going on within the church, if y'all remember that. And they were saying that the apostles, you know, they weren't taking care of the needy, they were claiming they weren't taking care of the, of the widows, and so there was a lot of grumbling going on. And the apostles got together and said, look, we've got to have some deacons here. Somebody that will oversee and make sure that the needy is taken care of, especially these widows are taken care of. And Stephen was one of them. So um, that was, you know, Stephen's appointment was, you know, just through man. You know, they weren't going to give him any powers, grant him any skills, anything. Just, you know, be a deacon here and take care of the widows and the needy. But we're going to see here in a little bit that Stephen had a whole lot more than what, you know, kind of man assigned him to. Now, it was a, this is a good thing because... That if you remember, this is after the day of Pentecost, and you know that the church is growing at this time, and of course as the church grows, a lot of times, or most of the time, there's more needs. There's more needs than just having the need of a preacher. You know, the preacher can't do everything, right. so then then you have to call in your deacons. and uh, So this is a big, important role for Stephen, really, as mm -hmm. the new church begins to grow. That's right. So that the apostles, you know, they were going to do the preaching and the teaching. And so, uh, in, in the next picture, so there, there was no doubt to Stephen's exceptional good character. You know, he had that good character. And then he had that miraculous power that he was given by God. Like I said, man only kind of gave him a position to help take care of the needy and the widows. But then God, you know, he gave him this great power. And it's interesting to note that also, although... Stephen was just a deacon, and he certainly had these gifts and powers from God that were at least equal to the apostles. And, and the scripture says in Acts 6, uh, verse 8, And Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. So, so through God's greatness, you know, Stephen received this great power. 